So you're charging this thing? Oh, okay. Look at this installation. How many of those do you think are in there? Oh, God, there's like 30 of them. Maybe 40. Where's that at? Where was that? That's not Royston. No. I don't think we know. Oh. That would be uh, some factory uh, New York or Pennsylvania, huh? Or Ohio? Well, gas compressing station. You know, I used to deliver Worthington um, compressors for refrigeration. Come on around the next slide. Operator station. This is our trusty operator, Ben Egloff. Oh, neat. Wow. Wow, nice speed. The kind of thing you would see in those TV shows, The Wild Wild West. It's a reciprocating pumping engine for natural gas for storage in the mountains. They store natural gas in impervious layers, in between impervious layers of rock, in a permeable rock, 5 million cubic feet. This was moved from that location to this museum. I was at that actual pumping station in northwest Pennsylvania in 1984.
clockwork. So there's pistons on both sides of the middle that are horizontally mounted as you saw moving. And they compress to the middle and that's where the pressure is to move the natural gas from a lower PSI to a higher PSI. The Royston station had, I believe, four stages or three stages, but I thought it was four. Well, they got up to like 600 PSI when they put it in the mountain. And they started with, I believe, 5 to 25 PSI and these 30 inch gas lines all the way from Kentucky. And they all come all the way up the Ohio Valley and Allegheny River uh, on a pipeline through the mountains in, in that place near Sheffield, Pennsylvania, which is south of Warren, which is in northwest Pennsylvania in the heart of the Allegheny National Forest. There was just a, a shed building, a few sheds there, real quiet. Two engineers kept the place immaculately clean. So if you can do this, that would be a great thing. thing weighs tons and look how fast it's going. Huge power here. This is 600 horsepower running on natural gas. It would siphon some of the natural gas out of the pipeline to run itself to pump from a lower stage to a higher stage. So there was four stages that pumped and then like from the uh, 5 to 25 from the huge 30 inch line they pump it up I can't remember. I heard in 1984, so I'm going to guess. I could be totally wrong. But the yeah, concept is there. They pump it up to like 80 or 90. Then from the, another engine would pump from 80 to 90 to like 150. Or, and then from 150, there's only like 250. And then finally from 250 to, uh, or maybe 450, then up to like 600 PSI. And then it was pumped into the mountain where it was stored, and from there they would exit to another pipeline up to the industrial systems, factories in northwest Pennsylvania, western New York, and northeast Ohio, that whole region, uh, which has a lot of heavy industry for, for uh, just the natural gas for homes, but also for like electrical power, gas-fired power stations. That, that blue gas. It's like a uh, synchronization for music. Papa Hyden's dead and gone. Centric gear. This is a really nice fan. Everyone should have one of these in their house. In this hot, humid weather, this feels really nice. It's called a line shaft. horizontal pumping piston runs on a race and a, that bed of steel and then there's bearings that to keep the uh, piston totally horizontal. Now here's our immense flywheel. The belt is on the smaller part. The large flywheel is not used for a belt on the outer rim, like the one in San Diego uh, County, in Vista, north, northern San Diego County, 10 mile, 15 miles inland from Oceanside, California. 
the, the, that, that one's a 12 foot diameter which looks like one third the size of this one. And it has a 30 inch wide face on the outer rim that they have a huge belt on. But this is tremendous. This is really awesome. These bolts are three, four inch in diameter. The nuts. We'll be there in a minute. I'll put my hand on it so you can see how large it is. These things were so efficient on fuel. The little ones that are like five horsepower, one quart of gasoline will make them run all day long. It's because of the flywheel, you have inertia in motion and that smooths out the whole stroke. There's no herky-jerky, no up and down. Modern engines are all about just the RPMs and just the explosive power of the piston in the cylinder. But here you can see how big that thing is. This, the scale is just immense. It's one of the largest in the world that's uh, uh, operable. They've actually had larger ones. There's a book of those drawings by the original designers. Beautiful handcrafted drawings in a book. Immense engines in, that were in Buffalo, New York. New York City, power works, engine works, compression works, mining, air compressors, pumping stations for oil. These are the adjuster screws, these horizontal ones here. See the size? That's one inch, you know. Between the joints of that knuckle, that's one inch. That's common for almost all people. So we should use the English system, not metric. Ha ha ha. Um, so, and they have these pits, you know, the, the wheel goes at least 30 inches to 36 inches below the slab level here. This is fantastic. I have this on wide angle to zoom out because I'm only two feet, three feet from this thing. You can see why they had lots of accidents back then, that if people weren't careful, they got caught in this equipment, which, uh, and the smaller ones had, you know, you can get your tie stuck in them, so you don't wear a tie. If you had long hair, you get long hair stuck in this, and guess what would happen? Kurt, don't want to describe anymore, right? So, yeah, the uh, early days industrial revolution was a rather dangerous occupation. You, you had to be sober, and you couldn't be uh, lightheaded. It produced a lot of serious people, and that's why there's so much seriousness in eastern United States. It's inbred into us from all the technology and industrialization. Very serious people. Great craftsmen. To this day, all because Baldwin Locomotive Works, and all the every town had iron works where people made these kind of engines. This is a Worthington. Worthington is around to this day, at least I believe, because I used to deliver refrigeration compressors of Worthington, which are modern style, and they worked off electrical motors. Uh, one was 120 horsepower. The motor was so large it was separate with like five belts, V-belts, like you see in your automobile, connected to the uh, electrical motor. And the, uh, the compressor alone weighed a ton. And so would the motor. So there's the manufacturer name. But it, it, it's Worthington. Um, I guess it's a model. Snow is a model of Worthington. That's the upper end. So there's your you got a whole drainage all around this thing. So there's no water. And usually they had a curb. 
so your toes don't go over the line. But they transported this about 100 miles to this location further south for this museum. Yeah, see right here it says it's a Worthington. This one was from Buffalo. So snow is a model by the Snow Holly Machine Works or Iron Works. We are an hour and a half, two hours north of Altoona where the Pennsylvania Railroad used to have a uh, engine building shop and heavy repair in central Pennsylvania. I was there yesterday in Altoona. A great museum.